Welcome, welcome everybody. Uh, I see there's 40 plus people here and counting. Uh, so welcome to the Bring the Power of NLP into your database by MindsDB. We've got a fun hour ahead of us. Just to give you a quick overview, there's a, this less than one minute intro for me, and I'll pass it over to Jorge, our co-founder and CEO, to give you an overview for about 10 minutes. And then back to me for a demo for about 30 minutes. And then we've got time for some questions at the end. Okay, uh, but yeah, we're really excited to show you all the great things that we've made recently. Uh, some really powerful use cases that are gonna be a huge help for lots of you. So without further ado, over to you, Hawaii, for a overview of MindCB. Thank you, Tom. Uh, let me share my, my screen. Okay, so MyZB now is the fastest growing applied machine learning project in the world. And we're very happy because this is a, an effort that we all did together. All the community and everyone at MyZB uh, has gotten us here. And the reason why MyZB is um, such a popular project is because it has a data centric approach to machine learning as opposed to a model centric approach to machine learning. So let's talk about what that is and why that is so interesting and, and, and the reason why um, we simplify the workflows for machine learning. The first thing is that when you have a model centric approach to machine learning, you end up doing a whole bunch of ETLing that may be unnecessary. So in a model centric approach, you start with a model and then you start uh, changing data um, that you necessarily don't call directly from the database, but you're actually pulling into a file and then transforming this data in memory through pandas or whatever um, scripts that you, you end up doing. And then eventually after this massaging of data and modeling iterations, you have a model that works, but turns out that when you want to move the model into production, you have to now also have a system that does the transformations that you have in Python. So some like orchestration for your ETLing um, every time you want to either retrain the model or every time you actually want to make a prediction if your data needs to be pulled from somewhere. Like let's say you need some historical data. and uh, this is uh, also crazy because when you want to make a prediction, you also need to be able to call the orchestration for the ETLing plus the model. So what people end up doing is running the orchestration, doing the prediction, and putting the data back into the database or the data warehouse so that they can actually do those predictions. And I think that that's um, something that we decided to, to solve, essentially abstracting the, the ETLing way and being able to allow people to model directly from data that is in a database and then be able to consume the model as if this model was a table in a database. So this second part is uh, probably the, the, the coolest trick about MyZB, uh, which is AI tables. The ability to query a model and then uh, whatever you have in the where statement is the input for the model and then output, you get a table. And then you can join this with all the tables and it's compatible at, at the stack with anything that can talk to your database, so BA tools and all the SDKs that already talk to databases. So having machine learning models as a first class citizen in databases is probably uh, the, the coolest trick behind MyZB. So uh, then initially MyZB uh, was writing integrations only in the data site, but this was because we, we made sure, or we wanted to make sure that it was data centric. So that any database that you have or anywhere where your data was at, that MyZB could support it Thanks to the community, we, we are like close to 70 integrations. Um, and, and yeah, the objective is that wherever you have data that you can actually use this data to do machine learning. And eventually we open the door for the other side of the spectrum, which is there's this world of machine learning applications, machine learning toolings, and, and the idea is that you don't have to be locked into any one of those. So we started to open up integrations to other frameworks than the one that we initially had. And this opened a very interesting opportunity, which is NLP. And in NLP, there are two main problems. You know, when you want to do bulk operations from uh, data that you have in your database, as well as fine tuning models, such as fine tuning models in OpenAI and very large number of models. And I think that um, Tom will walk you through a set of examples that will, will really show you how powerful this is. Tom, I'm going to hand it over to you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jorge. Okay, right, I will share my screen and we can get started. Okay. 
Right, I'm assuming you can all see my screen. Okay, so a very quick introduction. This is our editor. So on the left, we've got what we're calling the project tree view, where we can see all of the different databases we're connected to, and a lot of these AI tables. And we also have another feature here, which is projects. So I created a project um, called MLB Demo. And within this project, we treat it like a database. Uh, it can contain all of those relevant AI tables for uh, your project. Uh, so I've created one here, and uh, in blue piece of fashion, it's one I created earlier. Uh, what we can also do is hit use and then project name, and that uh, confirms that we're going to be working within here. So Tom. We don't need to walk. Yep. Sorry to interrupt. It, it seems like the the screen. Uh, some people cannot see it. Okay. Um. It looks like it's available. Uh. I I can try switching my. Okay. Yeah, most people can see it. Sorry. On the chat. Okay. Yeah. Most people. Can see it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. Uh, okay, so we've, uh, we're now going to be working within this project, and next we can check out the ML engine. So these are the different machine learning frameworks that we have ready-made integrations with. So Lightwood, that's our, our own auto ML framework, and these two new ones are the ones we're going to go, be going into in a bit more detail today. So Hugging Face and OpenAI which I'm sure you're familiar with. Uh, okay, so the final step of the setup is just to create a database. So we're connecting to an external MySQL database that we've, where we've got lots of um, ready-made tables. If I can actually look here, MySQL demo DB, and here's a lot of tables that we'll, uh, we'll see in just a second. Okay, right, so well, Further ado, let's solve some problems, shall we? So we've got roughly half an hour, and six problems. So let's see if we can do uh, one each uh, in each five minutes. So the first one, this is our data set. We've got some Amazon reviews. So here's the product name, here's the review. Now, wouldn't it be great if we could give the sentiment of this review? So we need to take this value as an input, and ideally, add on a column to the right here with the sentiment. And we can do that in bulk on all of the, the other ones here as well. So how do we do that with MindsDB? So the first step is to create a model. So we type create model. And then review, let's call it, now we give it a name. So review sentiment fire. Now we say what we would like to predict. predict. Uh, we can call this whatever we like, but I'll say sentiment. And next we've got the using. So for this work, we, what do we need? We need to find a model uh, within Hugging Face that is trained to do sentiment classification. Now there's lots of different ways of doing this, but uh, an easy way is to just use a model that's already built. So if we check out Hugging Face, we search sentiment. Okay, this one seems like it might do the job. And from here we can see, you can even test it out. So here's a demo, I like you, I love you. Label zero, label one, label two. Now these labels aren't especially sort of user friendly. Uh, so we can give them our own labels there as well. So let's continue here. And what are the things we need to declare with MindsDB? So the first one, great. Using engine equals in face and then there's also model 
name equals, and here we'll put the name of that model that we just found here. And next is the input form equals review. And next we've got an optional argument called labels. So this is fine as it is. We could run this query and it would create a model, but I think it would be helpful if we gave some better labels to these. So let's go back and add in labels equals negative neutral Now we can click highlight this. I bet we can either click run here, or what I like to do is press shift enter. Oh, I've missed a couple com uh, commas. Okay, that's the fun of a live demo, isn't it? Okay, brilliant. That's already created. That's one I created earlier. So we can check the status of this model with looking at our models table. So this is within the NLP demo here, models. So to find this exact row, so select star from models, selecting this models table where name equals uh, this one. And this is great for checking the status of the model. So typically it would be generating and then complete. So this one's already already been downloaded from Hugging Face, so no need to download it again. Okay, so next up, we just have to query this model. So as I mentioned, these are AI tables, so that we can treat them just like a regular SQL a table in SQL. So how would we do that? So let's do select star from got that, oh, got that model name. And we can say where this uh, the input column is called review equals Let's do it is easy to do LP with lines DB. Okay, I think that looks correct. So let's go. Brilliant. So these are all of the columns that are returned. And we've seen this is predicted as a positive statement. And we've also got the predicted probabilities or logits as well. So negative, very, very low, neutral, also very low, positive, 90%. Okay, so that's a individual prediction, but what if we want to do some bulk predictions, do them in batch? One of the great things about having this data in the database is that we can apply this model to all the rows at once. So how do you join two tables together? Well, that's pretty simple in SQL. So we do select star from, and then what's our table name? It's this one here. Select all the columns from here, from the table, and then join model name. And let's do just a limit of five. There we go. So we've got all the product name review. And over here, we've got the predictions. So these all look very positive. Okay, let's have a quick look. I purchased the Kindle 500. They basically use it playing games that you download. Okay, that seems, seems reasonably positive. Fantastic. It's 60%. So it's still a little bit uncertain. Like 98% positive for this top one. 
Thank you for my going, son. He is very happy with it. Easy for him. Super positive. Okay, great. I think we can call that one solved. Uh, definitely took a little bit longer than five minutes, but we'll make up some time on the next one. Okay, so the next problem we have is classifying bank transactions. So here is a table of bank transactions. We've got some transaction text here. These are sort of a two level hierarchy of the, of, oh, it looks like a lost connection. I think I'm, I think I'm okay. Um, so this, the simplest category for the transaction is this L1. Okay, so we want to somehow take this, oh, take this transaction text. That's just like you might see on one of the bank statements and predict what the category is, medical, travel, whatever. Okay, again, there are lots of ways to do this, but one really good way is using Hugging Face. Now, I didn't really mention this before, but Hugging Face has hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different models. And what we can do uh, for is, is look at all of the ones that are, I think it's classification, where is it? Text classification, and these are like a million different use cases. So we can find one that is already created. It's been trained on thousands and thousands of transactions, and it's. We can have a quick look here. And here's a, an example of the output. So. One of the real benefits of this is you, you're taking a model that's been trained. You don't have to spend a long time training. They've gone through all that process already. And if it's for, right for the use case, then, uh, then you're good to go. Okay, so let's just quickly state, check the state of the model. I'll paste this in. And this one's complete. I'll test it with an example. Just like we did on the last one, select from the model where transaction text is this. Train fare, I would expect that to be something like travel. Okay. Travel, transportation, other is the uh, predicted, predicted column. And then the underscore explain gives all these different uh, probabilities as well. Okay, so our next step is to apply this to the table. So let's let me follow almost exactly. So it's almost exactly the same. The limit of five, and we can see at the end here what are our new columns. This is the L one predicted travels, transportation, other. That's the same as as there. Travels, transportation earlier. Okay, that's rent and utilities. That's interesting. Well, let's see what the transaction text was. Debit card, purchase, lift. Okay, so I think we've categorized that actually correctly. And I think rent and utilities could be uh, a problem with data. So models doing a great job. Okay, um, next up is problem number three. A bunch of hours and descriptions. <clears throat> Hopefully, this works. I think my internet, here we go. So, we have a description, and here is the correct category. So, paper plane, sign, frame wall, hanging motivational office, decor, uh, maybe some books, clothing, accessories, and electronics. So there's only one, two, three, four categories, I think. Now, with Hugging Face, we don't just do text classification. You see here on the models, there are actually lots of other use cases. And then we've, so we've got text classification, we've got zero shot classification, we've got summarization, and also translation. And I think the right, model for this is going to be one called zero shot classification. Uh, zero shot allows you to 
to select what the categories are or the classes are on the fly. So it makes it extremely powerful and flexible. So let's use one I've created earlier. I'll talk you through some of the bits. Okay, so we're going to call the model product category classifier. We found a zero shot classification model. We name the input column just like before. And here are the candidate labels. So this is the new variable that we've got to describe. So this essentially says, please classify the description column as one of these four categories. So let's run that. It should be there already. Brilliant. Okay. Now we already know it's complete. So let's do a quick demo. Uh, so we'll do an individual prediction. I think this is going to be household. And it should be. Okay, category predicted household. And here are all the probabilities and the original description. So just like before, we can do these in bulk. Just do five. See what it looks like joining with the model. One thing to mention is that these zero shot models are quite large because they are so versatile. So they take often take a little bit longer than some of the more lightweight uh, text classification models. But anyway, here we go, answers already. And we can see category predicted, household, books, clothing, accessories, just like, just like we saw before. Fantastic, okay, three down, three to go. Right, if we're ready, let's do some question and answering. So, here are lots of questions. Uh, we have some about Volta, and if that is on Celsius, and all sorts of things as well, about bees even. So, what is a great choice of model to do this kind of really open-ended task. I think we've seen uh, in the news and uh, all of the talk recently about OpenAI and GPT. So we have built an integration to it. So let me just show you how we can use all the power of OpenAI to answer questions. So we create a model, we give it a name, we say what, we, what is the output column that we would like to predict. Say what the, en the engine is and then the uh, question column. So here we see it's, it's this one. Once again, this has been already been done. And since we're using the API, it actually takes barely any time at all to, to create this model. Um, we can um, then use it very, very easily. So select star from question model, we've declared it. And then where the question is, we can type in what do we like here. Uh, let's try Paris. Paris is located in France. Huzzah. Okay. Uh, now to see how this works applying to, to a table. So just like before, we just table and join it with the model. And we'll do the top five. Okay, so answer predicted. Remember that's our output column. Yes, Volta was an Italian physicist. There was no record of Volta being buried in the city of Lisbon. Okay, fantastic. So they look like they are spot on. Problem solved. Okay, and we're on to a slightly trickier one here. So here we, let's imagine we are Gmail. And in Gmail, there are different users. We've got a couple here, 
one called Tom and one called Eliza. And they've all got emails. And I like to categorize my emails into rugby, leisure, and work. Eliza does personal business and subscriptions. So this could, the interesting thing here is these could be very, very different for each of the different users. So we need a solution that is flexible. And what we can do is use prompt templates with OpenAI. Uh, so I'll show you how this works. We create a model, just like before, predict a name we'd like to predict using engine equals OpenAI this time. Got a plugin place. Uh, all we need to do is specify what this prompt template is. And the variables go in curly brackets. So email content and email categories. So what I've said is classify the content of the email as strict email strictly as. And then, then we will essentially give them a list of options. So it works in a very similar way to the uh, zero shot classifier. I think that could also be used for, for this problem. Let's enter on that. Already done. And this is good. Here's an example. So we can select email content, email categories, category predicted from the model. And we just need to specify what the email categories are and email content is. So those are my uh, categories. Uh, please be at the match at 2 p.m. Bring your boots. I think that might be rugby. And there we go. So category predicted is rugby. And just to finish this off, I can go in and do the whole table. It's only six, so it shouldn't take too long. Select from my uh, select star from the table and join it with the model. Okay, so we've got names, categories, email content, and the category predicted. Who fancies to swim later? That's leisure for me. Deep dive and circle back <laughs> before our call. Or the workplace lingo we love. Uh, that's work. Doctor's appointments, personal, booking a meeting, business, and very topical at the moment. Eight ways to have the ultimate Valentine's Day. That's one of those annoying subscription emails that you're, you're probably all sick of getting. Okay. Oh, actually, with prompt templates, we can use these with questions as well. So let's do a little bonus. We could answer, we create another one for answering questions. A question model joke. So we'll use the engine OpenAI again. And we can use a prompt template. Please answer with a joke and then provide a question. It has to be funny. So let's run this. Um, check, on, check in on the status of the model. Should be complete. And then let's have a look at what it comes back with. Select question and then the output column from this model name, where question is, what time is it? There we go, answer is, it's time to get a new watch. Not, not laugh out loud funny, but I think they've done pretty well. Uh, okay, so that's five down, just one to go. And I think for this one, I can show you a very new feature, which is on alpha, so I like testing environment, what we are able to do is we've crafted a few very, very specialized 
uh, prompt templates that we are making available to, to the user. Um, one here is all about turning a regular sentence into a JSON output. So this could be really, really useful for then making tables. We're essentially allowing the user to extract bits of, bits of information from the from just a regular piece of text. So how does this work? We say create model JSON creator. We say predict anything we like, as that would just be the name of the output. And using engine OpenAI as before. And here is a special variable called JSON structure. And what we need to do is just, this is the name of the output, and this is a description of what it is. So what we're essentially saying here is find the rental price in this sentence and put it in the price key. Find the location of the house and put it in the lock key. And find the number of bathrooms and put it in the NOB key. So let's run this. Again, already done. But status is complete. And then let's have a look at what it does with this. Gorgeous five bedroom property for five million in the heart of Beverly Hills. Fantastic. So here we go. Jason Alpert, Lock, Beverly Hills, number of bedrooms, five, price, five million. Okay, right. I think that is all for the demo. Successfully got through six problems. So thanks for listening, everybody. There is loads more features on the roadmap. Um, one that I haven't even gone into at the moment is fine tuning open AI models. So we can use, okay, if I get back here, so imagine we can use something like the question answer model, but we can fine tune it on your very specific data. So the power of that can be enormous. Uh, we're also working on uh, fine tuning of hugging face models as well. So similarly, if, uh, if these are, or maybe the transaction class for is a good one. Um, maybe if these are, are good, but they're not quite right, or could be more accurate, then you can start off from a really good starting place with this a model that's already built and then add uh, increase the accuracy to it. Uh, I think that is just about it for now. So I think we will open up the floor I'll hand it over to Costa if, uh, if there are any that have come up during the demo. Well, I would say Costa. I'm not sure if Costa is here. Uh, I, in the meantime, I will have a look at the questions myself. Um, Patricio, are you around as well? Okay. So I'm just having a look at the questions here. Uh, so the very first one is, are most models from open source, is it free to download or use in MindsDB? So the short answer is yes, but it depends. So I'm assuming we're looking at hugging face here. Yep. So there are, the, these are all open source. I think for some of them, they do have like slightly specific licenses, but in general, they're all open source. You can, you can use them in Python if you really wanted to uh, through the transformers library. Um, so what we're essentially doing is downloading the model storing it with the MindsDB and allowing you to access it in a really, really easy way. Okay. Um, to the next one, uh, Patricio, feel free to jump in, take any questions you like. Uh, I'll do the next one. Okay. So what, uh, da, 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 order by, yeah, um, let's go for order by upvotes. 
that sounds sensible. Okay, next one. Is it possible to work sensitive data such as healthcare without having privacy issue? Yes, so I th think what we're asking here is, is the data secure? And is yes. So you can run MindsDB in a variety of different places. Uh, certainly having it within your own AWS is an option. Uh, so the data never has to leave whatsoever, leave your Um, that's that's definitely one option. Okay, the next question from Shiva is, are the models prediction automatically added when new rows are added? No, yeah, I can see an answer here already. No, they are not, uh, but you can, yeah, like Jorge has said in the answer, you can add you can add add a job, which is another new feature that we uh, we haven't outlined yet. Which can you could write a SQL query which identifies the new rows, and then it adds in the information. Uh, the, it runs the model on those rows. Okay, right. Uh, any questions here? Okay. Next one is by Zen Ling. I assume, I assume those output labels exist in the SQL table and it can be visualized on third party software such as Power BI, etc. Those output labels. Yes, so the, what we've the, the outputs that we've displayed here are, they are not persisted as they are. So it's a bit like writing some code, you return an answer, but it's not specified what we're doing with that answer at the moment. What we can certainly do very easily is store those results in, in another table. So you have access to them. And you could even join those results to another table as well. Uh, so it's it's certainly possible to to store everything that we've we've seen returned here. And then once it's stored in a table, you can present it however you like in any of those third party third party tools. Okay. I think uh, one from Ben says, "I think this demo is a bit more technical than I was looking for." Is there an email I can send a quick high level example of my use case need to find out my, find out if my CB could be our solution? Yes, uh, absolutely you can. Ian is a great contact. Uh, or also our, yeah, uh, like Jorge has mentioned, our Slack channel on community. So on there we have a dedicated thread for, a dedicated channel, I should say, for questions. So if anybody has any questions about my CB or how it's used, or if you if you come across any errors, I'm not sure what to do, then feel free to, to put them on there. Either one of the MindsDB team or someone else in the community will be able to, uh, be able to answer. Okay. Okay, just looking through these upvoted ones. Uh, is there a, a next one is does MindsDB have a real time API? Uh, MindsDB has, oh, so we have integration to Kafka. Um, yep, I'm going to try and find one that doesn't have an answer to it yet, I think. Okay, Joy has answered live. Uh, okay, I think we have at least written answers to all of these. Um, Patricia, are there any questions you would like to give any any quick answers to that, that are worth uh, exploring a bit more? Is 
season thumbs up. Okay, I'm not hearing anything from Patricio, so I will, I will soldier on. Okay, uh, next question. This is from Asmi. Any model to convert question to SQL query from the table or more? Uh, so the question is, is there any model to convert question to SQL query from a table or more? Uh, so yes, I think Hawaii has mentioned not yet. I think what, well, to understand this correctly, we're trying to turn regular text into a SQL query. So that is, if, if oh, SQL query from a table or more. So I think it might be possible. So with OpenAI, there is, I can't remember the name of it precisely at the moment, but there is a coding component. Um, so it's possible to use the coding flavor of GPT. And the answers that might provide could give you a, a good reason attempt at defining that SQL query. So for example, it could, a question could be, could, can, um, uh, please give me a query to, to count the number of rows in a table called dates or something. Uh, okay. Uh, pause, I think, so it might be, Okay, uh, so Patricio is uh, is talking, but it seems like the sound isn't going through. Okay, I will um, continue on for the So one from Kostya, who asks, is there a way to tune the models for my context? Uh, Yes, so this is the fine tuning that I mentioned. Uh, Patricia is actually the one who has developed this, and I think it might be available on cloud right now. So stay tuned for some demonstrations, which are uh, or demonstrations and documentation, which will be coming very, very soon. But yes, uh, you will be able to fine tune it on your precise context. Okay, I'm going to pronounce this name wrong, so my apologies. If any, uh, they ask, is there a comprehensive doc? Is there a comprehensive documentation that explains this NLP use case? Actually, yes, I'll show you that. We have a dedicated section on our documentation. So the URL is docs.mindsdb.com, and you can go down here to natural language processing. Here we give you a good overview. And then NLP with hugging face. And NLP with open AI as well. And we also have a an example library so we covered a couple of different text classification examples. Uh, but another one is spam. You could do spam classification. And here are all a long list of all, some of the ones we've, we've tested. So here's an interesting one on hate speech, for example. And it gives a, a prediction of whether it's hateful speech or not. But uh, but yeah, the documentation is always a really good place to go. Okay, next question from Vivian is, do you need license for using engine equals open AI? I don't believe you do. So just to give a bit more context here, Think. Yeah, so there is actually 
another field, which is optional on cloud, which I think is API key. Uh, this might be slightly wrong, but it is within the documentation. And then you would draw or paste your API key in here. Now, MindsDB as a default API key. So any usage of OpenAI uses the MindsDB API key for, for now. But this is topped up occasionally. Uh, so if you have any production level systems, then we would certainly recommend grabbing your own API key and using that. Okay, right. Uh, will you uh, so Egal asks, will you share the code and data set with us? That would be great. Uh, yes, uh, I will certainly share this off the call. And probably a bit of general comments alongside most of the queries. Okay. So root mark asks, does this work in sync with database connected? Any changes made here can affect actual database data. Uh, yes, so I think this also depends on the permissions you have. So right up the start, at the top, top here, I in this database, we have created a public user called user, which is read only. So this means I, through MindsDB, can pull data from these tables but I'm not able to delete them. Uh, we also have an admin user for this MySQL demo DB. So if I were to connect through the admin user, which has everything enabled, I would be able to uh, add new tables or delete tables, just like you would through any other uh, editor. I, I really like using dBeaver, so if I can pull up So here's actually the Amazon reviews one. Uh, and yeah, you can write write queries in, the, in uh, the editor section, just like you would in the MySDB editor here. Okay, let me grab the next question. Okay, John asks, could you use a model to score a vendor submission against a set criteria? In other words, predict the most amenable submission rather than having to manually assess. Uh, so always says, should be possible. And I would certainly agree. Um, one thing you can certainly do is, is speak to email ian at mindsdb.com if we can help you out or also get in touch on our community Slack channel. But if I think about this for a second, I have some early thoughts on how one might go about solving this problem. So potentially one approach would be having lots of input data on previous submissions and then having your own like scoring method score for each of those submissions. And what you can do is train a model on this data to understand the relationship between all of those to do with a vendor submission and then the you and once that model is trained, the relationship between those inputs and the output score is understood. Then whenever you have a new submission with all the same inputs, you can use the model to predict what the estimated score is. Uh, so the key here really is having data in the first place. And that means lots of rows of previous submissions 
and ideally some really good columns, which are variables that describe things about that submission. Okay, All right, let's move on to the next one. Demetrio asks, what coding model would you use for a code plagiarism checker? Uh, looks like Jorge has answered that one already. Uh, I'm honestly not too sure, uh, but uh, I think maybe there's some models available on Hugging Face, or more likely, maybe there's something on OpenAI, but it's, uh, it's not a use case I'm familiar with right now, but we can, we can certainly have a look. Okay. Uh, next one. Uh, this is from Abdel Kader. They ask, if I use it in cloud, is there a way to have a model exported to use it in test or dev machine? Uh, yes, this is not available at the moment, but it is something we're considering for our roadmap. And one of the benefits here is we have some pretty heavy GPU enabled machines, which allows models to be trained very quickly. So it's definitely possible um, for you to get large models created in a, in a smaller amount of time than you might be able to do. Uh, but yeah, like I said, that's not something currently enabled, but we're, we're considering. Okay, and then it looks like the final question from Chris. They say, is MindsDB most often connected to source systems providing real-time ML, or is it most often part of downstream yeah, analytics process? Is MindsDB most often connected to source systems? I think it's, it's possible to do both, like Jorge has mentioned. So, Depends what the source system is. Uh, I would certainly say if it's a database, then it's very likely we already connect to it. Uh, but we have lots and lots of other integrations. I can actually have a quick look at some of these here. And these are incre increasing by the second. Uh, these are databases at the moment, but we have other, uh, what was the wording? Mm -hmm other source systems, say for example, Twitter. That's uh, another integration which we're building right now and loads of other APIs. Um, so uh, pretty much any SaaS tool, we're looking into how, you can, how we can treat that a little bit like a database and, and pull the data from that. I mean, Google Sheets is a good example here as well, maybe. Which isn't strictly a database, but uh, the summary is we're adding more integrations to source-like systems. So it's, it's very possible that we'll be able to support more, more integrations in the future. Okay, right. I think that is all the questions. I'm sure if Costa is around, then we can make sure we have all of these logged and uh, get back to you with the information on from here. Can we go back to our editor? All these queries, uh, a quick write-up. Don't get me. I can hear you, Costa. Uh, there are a couple of more questions on the top. Let me scroll up. Okay, here we go. It's one from Shiva, I think. Okay, say I'm using Hugging Face model, where does the model actually run? If it runs on our AWS infrastructure, does that mean that, mean that is a model server always running or does it spin up a GPU instance whenever prediction is needed? Okay, so Patricio's answer is, great question, Shiva. As far as I know, it's the former, uh, the first answer. Having said that, I'm in the research team, so I'm checking with the engineering team to confirm whether this is correct. 
or if we have an open source mechanism for spinning up GPU instances on demand. Okay, I hope that answers the question, Shiva. Uh, Costa, I'm just looking for any additional questions. Are there any you could read out? I can't see any new ones at the moment. I think there is a question from Ruth Mark uh, at the top about uh, storing prediction results in the database different table. Oh, okay, I've been looking at order by upvotes. Okay, I see. So creating database and then storing predicted results in the same database, but in a different table, which joins in the data table and predicting columns. Please show example. Uh, we would certainly love to. Uh, we have a, a page in our documentation all about this. So we'll, we'll share that in the notes afterwards. Uh, next one by Vivian. Can SQL Server use MindsDB? Uh, yes. That's the answer. Vivian also asks what is included in the time series? So the answer from Patricio is we have an auto for typical force casting scenarios that use a wide range of modeling techniques. Community contributors are about to finish an integration with classical statistical models from the amazing Mixler team. Yeah, that should be a really, really powerful uh, machine learning engine. Uh, very excited for that integration. Okay, right. I think that is all time for everybody. Thank you very much for, for tuning in. I really appreciate you taking out the time of your day to see all the cool stuff that we've been developing. I think Costa has some more of these in the works in the next, in the coming weeks. So I look forward to catching some of you then. Yeah. Thanks, Tom, uh, for really great demos. And I uh, will have another webinar for MySQL. It will cover uh, not only NLP scenarios, but uh, also like classical uh, machine learning, including really good examples for time series. Um, but it will also have NLP component. Then the next one will be about MongoDB. So stay tuned. Visit our website events page if you want to join and join our community uh, to stay in, informed about everything we uh, are doing and uh, ask any questions, get support from MindCB team and from community. And uh, yeah, tell us what you think. Of Actually, we build MindZB for for community. It's open source, and we really like to have more feedback from from you, on what you do with MindZB, how you use it, and what you really need. So, thank you for joining, and uh, have a great day. See you later, guys. Bye.